Star Playhouse starring David Niven, Charles Boyer, Dick Powell, Merle Oberon. Brought to you by your Singer Sewing Centers from coast to coast and the more than 32,000 members of the Singer Organization who make, sell, and service Singer sewing machines for both industry and the home. Remember, Singer sells its products and services for the home only through Singer Sewing Centers, identified by the famous Red S trademark on the window. Tonight on Four Star Playhouse, Singer presents David Niven in Finale. Reviews a year old. What have you done since? Oh, nothing. I, I don't seem to be able to get a part. Any sort of a part. No? I'll tell you why. He's right. You look too much like Roger. Sorry I can't use you, Carlisle. I'm not running a sideshow. I'm putting on a play. I can't tell the difference between you and Roger. How do you expect the audience to? I'm sorry. Mr. Jameson told me to tell you he's afraid you won't do. The part calls for an older man. I'm sorry, Mr. Carlyle. Would you mind walking over to the window? You know, it's uncanny. I could have sworn that I was listening to the voice of Roger Carlyle. And the profile. The spinning image. Just what's your relationship to Roger? Roger's father and my father were twins. Well... I have $170,000 tied up in this production. I know. You don't want me. I can't take the chance. I can't take the chance that the critics are going to say that I'm taking advantage of Roger's name. It's not that you think I can't handle the part. No. It's just that I look too much like Roger. Yeah. But I can change my voice and with makeup. The part is too big. Oh, I need a part like this. Oh, I'm sorry, Carlo. Hi, Charlie. Hello, Steve. Hello, Van. How have you been? Oh, kicking around. Uh-huh. Been a long time. You want something for me, Van? Don't go, Steve. Want to do me a favor? Sure. What? This new play you're putting on. There's a walk-on, a part of uh, Elsie, I think she said. She? Friend of yours? Mm-hmm. Girl I went to school with. Too old. This is a girl of 20. This is her daughter. Oh. You got her outside? Uh-huh. What's her name? Henrietta. Okay, I'll take her to Colton. He's casting the bit part. Thanks. How's it been going, Steve? I've got competition. Theater is a small world. It certainly is when two actors look almost exactly alike and one's at the top. Makes it tough. Maybe if you'd be my manager instead of Rogers. Maybe you came along too late. <laughs> I wish I could help you, Steve, but... Yeah, maybe you can. We're right at the top of the up-and-coming season. You must know about lots of spots. Maybe... Well, all you had to do is to ask a favor. Sorry, Steve. I'm no agent. As you say, I'm Roger's manager. I've got to look out for him. Oh, sure. But look, you've got a great talent, Steve. I've seen your work. Your characterizations are excellent. There's a quality that... that... That Roger doesn't have? I wasn't going to say that. <laughs> of course not. Okay, Van, I think she'll do. Just don't forget it's a favor. Mm-hmm. You. Have you spoken to Roger lately? No, I guess he's been kind of busy. I'm having cocktails with him at the green room at 6 o'clock. Why don't you join us? All right, thanks. Thank you, Mr. Madden. Been a long season. Now, with the play closing, we're going to have to find something for the fall. Oh, there's plenty of time. Days have a habit of stretching into weeks. Before we know it, we'll be frantic. It's the same thing every year, isn't it? Something always turns up. Mm-hmm. Roger, I saw Steve today. Oh? How is my dear cousin? Unhappy. What a pity. But in good health, I hope. He hasn't been working. 
I know. He asked me to help him. <laughs> Poor Steve, he lives in a dream world of his own. He's very naive. I... I invited him here for a drink. I have nothing to say to him, however hard you try to prompt me. He depresses me, makes me feel so sorry for him. About his working. I've seen him work, haven't you? Oh, I think I you should talk. Ah, oh, Gloria. Hello, darling. Mm, you look ravishing. Are you going to have dinner with me? Right away? Right away. And I have to be at the theater early tonight, the death time. Hi, Van. Hello, Gloria. A thick, rare steak. I'm famished. <laughs> then you can drop me at the theater. We ought to wait a few minutes, Rod. Steve will be here. I don't want to rush my dinner. He's your cousin, Roger. I should have thought you'd want to help him. Well, now you're being naive. Would you rather wait here for him or join us? Roger been here, Tom? He just left with Van. What do you have, Steve? Well, give me a scotch, make it a double. Mr. Carlyle? Yes? My name is Martell, Francis Martell. I've been wanting to tell you, I, uh, I think you're a fine actor. No, I'm afraid you're mistaken. I'm not Roger Carlyle. <laughs> no, I'm not mistaken. Now, you're Stephen Carlyle, Roger's cousin. I've seen you. Small parts, but excellent. Well, not very lately you haven't seen me, but thank you just the same. You know, it's rather fortunate my meeting you like this. Oh? You see, I'm an author. Uh, books, mostly, but uh, I've been studying the theater, and I just finished a play. Well, that's fine, Mr... Uh, Martell. Mr. Martell, but I don't see how I can help you. Well, there's a very excellent part in it for you. Oh, I'm afraid you'd better try and sell your play without me. I'd just be a drawback. Apparently, I look too much like my cousin. But that's just it. The leads are played by two people who resemble each other. Two people? Yes, and I thought that uh, possibly you and your cousin might... Two people who look alike? Yeah. A play for Roger and me? Right. Well, where is it? Believe it or not, I, uh... I happen to have a copy with me. <laughs> what are we waiting for? Let's go. Where? Let's go to my place. I want to read this right away. Uh, put it on the tab, Tom. Mr. Van Alden, please. Van? Steve. Is Roger there? No, Steve. He's leaving for Connecticut right after the performance. He's spending the weekend there. Look, I found a wonderful play for him. I can take it to him, Steve. I'm leaving tomorrow. Well, that's fine. Now, Van, listen. The last time I saw Roger, he told me he wanted to help me. Well, it's a great part for me in this play, too. I wouldn't put too much faith in what Roger says, Steve. You know how particular he is about choosing his parts. Oh, sure, sure. But he won't turn this one down. He can't. The part's tailor-made for him. Mine is, too. This is the break I need, Van. It's a great chance. All right, Steve. I'll see what I can do. Fine. Thank you. Goodbye. He was a pretty big guy wearing a brown suit. He sat right here next to me on Saturday. Oh, yeah, I remember. No, I haven't seen him, Steve. He's supposed to meet me here. I hope he shows up. You look kind of nervous. Something wrong? No, no. I'm just expecting to hear from Roger today. Is he back in town? He should be. He's got a show tonight. Well, whatever it is bothering you, there's his manager. Hi, Steve. Van, now what about the play? Everything you said it was. Great for Roger. Oh, that's wonderful. Now, Martel's meeting me here this evening. We can make all the arrangements. No, Steve. What? Martel won't be meeting you here. <laughs> well, of course he will. I talked to him this morning. But Roger talked to him this afternoon. Well, then everything's fine. No, Steve, it isn't. Roger bought the play from Martell. Bought it? Then I don't understand what's wrong. He's been looking for a good story for his first picture. He's going to take it to Hollywood. Hollywood? On film, Steve, you can do things you can't do on stage. You mean he's going to play both the parts? Mm hmm It was a possibility that hadn't occurred to you or to me either. But it was the first thing that occurred to Roger. Sorry, Steve. Hello, cousin. Ah, Steve. Well, I didn't know you were a fan of mine. It's taken me a long while, really, to appreciate you. 
<laughs> a sense of humor, too. It's wearing thin, cousin. Will you excuse us, Van? Sure. I'll be in the car, Roger. What do you want, Steve? I sent you a play that both of us could do. And you bought it for yourself so that you could play both That's the right. parts. It's a matter of common sense. Good business. Good business. Safeguarding my future. I've been watching you for a long time, Steve. That last part you played, I saw it eight times. Do you know why? It's taken me some while, but I think I'm just beginning to understand. Do you think I relish the idea of another actor who looks like me and sounds like me and who's 12 years younger? Despite my public, Steve, I'm not a great actor. I never will be. I'm a good technician. But you have a great talent. Thank you. Do you think I can afford to let the critics compare your work to mine? Do you think I'd be such a fool as to appear on the same stage as you? That explains it. And the trouble I've had getting a part. I have a certain amount of influence on Broadway. I've been pretty stupid, haven't I? Oh, give it up, Steve. Do something else. Sell shoes or something. A lot of charm, you, you'd make a success. The theater's my life, Roger. Well, you're throwing your life away because I warn you, you'll never get anywhere. And I warn you that I'll... You what? <laughs> now, don't go melodramatic on me. What are you gonna do? Kill me? Whatever your sewing needs, whatever your sewing pleasures, see the new Singers. Because only Singer offers you all three types of sewing machines. There's the world-famous Straight Needle Singer, the best loved, most widely used machine in the world. The revolutionary new Slant Needle Singer, which makes it so much easier to see what you're sewing. And the amazing Swing Needle, the finest of all zigzag machines, because it's the Singer zigzag machine. This is the wonderful sewing machine that lets you do everything from straight sewing to hundreds of decorative stitches without special attachments. See how the needle swings back and forth? Really fascinating, isn't it? And just by moving this lever, you can change the stitch to work out all kinds of interesting patterns. And now look how you can use this magic needle to make handsome monograms, big and bold, or any size you wish. You decide, and the clever swing needle will give you a table setting as practical as it is modern and smart. Dainty applique work is done just as easily. This is organdy on fine linen. And gorgeous table linens like these are so inexpensive when you make them yourself. Now here's how that same machine does your everyday sewing. It will sew straight seams smoothly and perfectly, and then overcast them to give all your sewing a beautiful finish. It will mend tears in children's play clothes. You merely adjust the stitch to the width of the tear. It will make buttonholes and sew on buttons, all without special attachments. In fact, it will sew just about everything. And this famous name means perfect performance. Yes, and Singer offers you a free home trial of this amazing Singer machine. Have it delivered to your house tomorrow, without charge, without obligation, and use it on your own sewing in the relaxed atmosphere of your own home. Just phone or stop in at your Singer Sewing Center tomorrow for your free home trial. Roger Carlyle is settled at the Beverly Towers here in Hollywood, and shooting has started on his first picture. They say this is a magnificent part for him. But Roger isn't on Broadway anymore. Doesn't that make a difference? Look, I'll go on the road. I'll play anything just so long as I can act again. No, Steve, it's, it's no use. I'm afraid Mr. Jameson said no. Matinee Idol in 11th day of shooting. Roger Carlyle has captured Hollywood with his disarming manner and popular charm. Why don't you tell me the truth, Madden? We've been over this before. Because Roger told you not to give me a part. Look, I don't care what reason you think I have. Since your quarrel is with Roger, why don't you take it up with him? Maybe I will, Madden. Maybe I will.
Hello, Van. Why, Steve. Is Roger in? Mm-hmm. Come on in. Who's there, Van? Well, cousin. What brings you to Hollywood? I want to have a few words with you. I'll be going. I have an appointment. So stick around, Van. This won't take long. I know. But I'm late now. Besides, I might need your protection. Don't you see the steely glint in Steve's eye? He's liable to pull a gun on me. Maybe, if I had a gun. Well, see you later. I'm in a good mood, Steve. Don't abuse it. If it's money you want. No, it's not. I want to know how long you think you can keep this up. Keep what up? I intend to work in the theater whether you like it or not. <laughs> well, go ahead. At the moment, I can't. But I'm going to change that. Are you sure? You really are afraid of me, aren't you, Roger? I don't know why I should be. Because this is the magic city, and I own it. Figuratively speaking, Stephen, of course. My name is in every newspaper, on everybody's lips. And this film, which I've just started, which you were good enough to find for me, will do me ten times more good than the biggest Broadway hit. And incidentally, will make me more important on Broadway than I ever was before, if that were possible. Oh, you struggle a long time. You think you're never going to get your reward. But you do. You do. And your name goes ringing round the world. Your image is on film, preserved for posterity. This is not like working in the theatre, acting your heart out, and then the stupid, ugly people get up from their seats and go out into the night and forget you. Now, what's the matter with you? You look as though you were on stage on opening night and you'd forgotten your lines. More like a dress rehearsal. I wasn't sure if I could handle the part, but now I know I can do it just fine. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, good luck, Roger. I've got what I want, and I'm holding on to it. I don't need any more luck. You've just had some. Good evening, Mr. Carlisle. Good evening. Oh, uh, your mail. Thank you. Did you want me to have your car put away? No, Mr. Van Orton is using it. The chauffeur will put it away. Good night. Good night. Stupid thing, I um, left my key in the apartment this morning. I went out. Do you have a duplicate? Yes, I believe I have. How's the picture coming, Mr. Carlyle? Oh, it's fine, fine. Say, I have a lady friend who's in your picture, Barbara. You know, the uh, cigarette girl in oh, the sure, cafe sure. scene, yes. Well, she asked me if I'd ask you to intercede for her with some of the producers on uh, the... I'm afraid I can't do anything like that, but good night. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. No, Carlisle. Sorry. I hope I haven't been out of bounds. I didn't mean to...
Roger? Is that you, Roger? Yes. Oh, well, I, uh, I'm sorry to get you up, but I seem to have misplaced my wallet. I just can't find it. Wallet? Yes, I was thinking I might have dropped it in the car. All right. I'll have the chauffeur look for it in the morning. It's late now. There wasn't much money. It was just my driver's license. It's all those sort of things. All right, all right. Good night. Mr. Bannon. Hello, I just want to see Mr. Carlisle. Roger. I hurried right over. You sounded funny on the phone. Mr. He. Hey, what the devil is this? What's all that? Where's Roger? I was going to kill him. Kill him? I was going to make it look like an accident. I had it all worked out. So it was his life or mine. He's killing me, Van. This is fantastic, Steve. That's no solution. I know. So what am I going to do? I don't know right now, but we'll work it out. We've got to. I'll work it out. Ray? Yes? Sure was in surgery a long time. Plastic surgery takes a long time. Plastic surgery? Him? Mr. Carlyle will need rest. Complete quiet for a few days. Oh, oh, sure, sure. Mr. Carlyle, are you awake, Mr. Carlyle? Yes, nurse. Feeling a little better today? Oh, I guess so. Tell me, what is my face really like? Completely different. Perhaps not as good looking as you were, but I'm sure you'll like it. Oh, if it's different, I'll like it all right. In about a week, you should be able to get a look at the new Stephen Carlyle. New Stephen Carlyle. Everything new. You'll rest now. Rest is the important thing for you. Plastic surgery, eh? I had a girlfriend once. Hello? Yeah. For you. Me? Nobody knows I'm here. May I, nurse? I guess so. A little telephone conversation can't hurt you. Yes? Steve? This is Van Alton. Oh, hello, Van. Oh, 
had a devil of a time tracing you to the hospital. What's the matter with you, anyway? Oh, nothing. I'll be out in a few days. Oh, good. Steve, a terrible thing has happened. Roger, he was killed this morning in an automobile accident. Roger killed? Yes, Steve. Roger killed? I'm here, Ben. Uh, see, uh, uh, Steve, I, I hate to bring this up now, but the studio is frantic. And it's a break for you, too. Really a great break. You see, Roger was just about halfway through his picture. And when I told him about you and how you would step in and finish it because you look just like him, they jumped at it. It's the opportunity of a lifetime, Steve. Steve, Steve, what's the matter? Aren't you excited? I thought... Your star, David Niven, will return in just a moment. Free in your own home. Yes, now you can try a new Singer sewing machine in your own home absolutely free of charge. You can discover for yourself the pleasure of sewing on a new Singer, any model, any style you'd like. And listen, with your machine, you'll receive this certificate from Singer. It's your guarantee you're under no obligation. So tomorrow, phone your Singer Sewing Center for your free home trial of a new Singer sewing machine. It was a pleasure having you with us tonight as guests of the 32,000 members of the Singer organization. We hope that you enjoyed our play. And now we'd like to show you a little preview of next week's performance on Singer Four Star Playhouse. Maybe you don't know who I am. Your father's the district attorney. That's right. He considers gambling illegal in this city. Very. He'd close you up in two minutes if he knew about your back room. Look, Mr. Warren, I told Look, you Look, Mr. Dante, I know you've got a back room. I know that certain select people gamble there. I came into your place tonight to shoot dice. All right, Mr. Warren. But I think we should understand each other right from the beginning. Sure. If I get in trouble with the district attorney's office because I let you in, you know what I'm going to do? What? I'm going to cry my eyes out. And I'm going to break your nose. CBS Television Network.